Unfortunately, each year there are literally thousands of distressing court battles over the custody of children, innocent victims of messy divorces. Our next story is a very unusual custody case, leaving a young girl and a boy as the pawns in a tragic confrontation and the victims of an unsolved mystery. Perhaps you can help find a happy ending to their story. On November 16, 1981, Debbie and Mark Baskin's second child, Bobby, was born in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. They already had a 15-month-old daughter, Christy. Oh, he looks like Marvin. Well, he, he looks like, he's got my hair. Yeah, but he looks like Grant. Debbie's parents, Sandra and Marvin Maple, had three daughters of their own, and they were overjoyed by the birth of their grandson. Hi, Bobby. Sixteen months later, Michael, the Baskin's third child, was born. Then, as his young family grew, Mark decided he wanted to go back to school in Louisville, Kentucky, 190 miles away, and get his master's degree. As Debbie and Mark planned the move to Louisville, they realized they were going to face financial problems for the first few months while they looked for jobs. When the Maples suggested taking the two oldest children just for the summer, it seemed an ideal way to ease the financial burden without disturbing the children. You and Mark will be coming here? After we had made the decision that it would be good for the kids to stay with mom and dad, Mark and I one evening just sat with the kids at supper and discussed it with them. Would you like this or not? Um, we'll be coming to see you quite often. We'll be calling. The kids were very close to mom. They were real excited. They knew that it was going to be a toy store every day. Honey, I guess this is it. The day we moved to Louisville with the furniture and the cars and all, it was rough. Come here, guys. Give mommy a big hug. Christine and Bobby were crying. Michael was crying. I was crying. Mark was trying to act like he could handle it, and I think he was he was pretty torn up. Bye bye. We love you. Michael, the youngest child, went to Louisville with his parents, while Christy and Bobby stayed in Murfreesboro with their grandparents, the Maples. Although it was upsetting to have the family split apart, they all kept in touch regularly. However, finding work in Louisville turned out to be very difficult, so Bobby and Christy stayed with the Maples all the way through to Christmas. Christmas, we come down, and Christmas was a weird Christmas. Mother was real cool. I had a talk with Mother about, I think we'll just get the children. She got very angry. Suddenly, I'm, I'm this very bad person for wanting my children with me. You know, we're, we're their parents, and I miss them, Mom. They've been my whole life for all... Honey, but I really miss you. I thought you were the one who would never leave Mama, me. Mama, I love you, and I know you miss me, but I miss my kids, you know? I just really miss them. I... Well, they're part of our lives. They're part of our family. Now, Debbie, you can't do this to me. The two children stayed with the Maples, but by April, Debbie and Mark's relationship with them had deteriorated to the point where they were no longer welcome to stay at the house when visiting their children. Even so, Debbie and Mark continued their visits and on April 10th rented a motel room so the family could all stay together. We picked up the children on April 10th. I guess it was about just before midday. kids began to relax as they were with us and laughing and having a good time. We had a very good time that day. We played with the children. We took pictures. The kids were having a lot of fun. They were running down the slide. It was a good day. The visit in April was the first time the kids acted like something was wrong. Christy got emotional about, Nanny's not you, Mommy. I really miss you. I said, Christy, we are going to be together in about six weeks, babe. I said, you started your achievement test. You're going to finish them this week. We're, we're, everything is going to be okay. And I, and, I, and I asked her at that day, I said, has something happened? And she kept telling me, no, no. Even at that point, we never even dreamed of what they were cooking up. Mr. and Mrs. Maples, tell me if you would, please, what happened the night Bobby and Christy got back from the motel? Oh, they were terribly upset. Bobby a month later, on May 5th, the Maples tried to gain control of the children. They petitioned for custody of Bobby and Christy before Judge Robert Corlew in his chambers. It wasn't until the next morning that they told us about the terrible things both their parents had done to them the night before in the motel room. The Maples charged that their own daughter and son-in-law, Debbie and Mark, had abandoned their children and that they were members of a satanic cult. Judge, both of these 
Most shocking of all, the Maples alleged that Bobby had been molested in the motel room by his mother and father during the April 10th visit. Their parents are totally unfit to have custody of them. Mr. Macon, I'm going to grant your clients temporary custody of Christy and Bobby, and I'll schedule a hearing pursuant to this matter for May 23rd. On the evening in May, the phone rang, and it was about 9.30, and I said, okay, Daddy, what's happened? Finally, he says, well, I know you've, you, you and Mark have molested the kids. I think I dropped, I literally dropped the phone on the floor, and I ran to the bathroom. I was, I was sick. What was amazing to me was that a, a middle-aged middle couple were able to walk into a judge's chambers without any proof, without that judge even talking to us or the children, and take our rights away as parents. And that, that order was signed by Judge Corlew. And I hold him responsible for a lot that's gone on. This was the type of case where the abusers, whomever they were, or alleged abusers, certainly needed to be removed from the children, at least temporarily, while the investigation could continue. Upon the children's return on Sunday evening, Bobby was hyper and his eyes were... On May 23, 1988, almost three weeks after the Maples had brought their charges against Debbie and Mark, the court hearing was held. Mother got up on the stand. She said all this stuff. There was no emotion. Daddy gets up there, and he perjured himself. The judge kept saying, I'm going to hold somebody in contempt of court, and he never held a soul. That's what was killing me. Not, you know, the testimony was, it was bizarre. Therefore, it is the decision of the court that it is in the best interest of the children and the public that Bobby and Christy Baskin be placed in the temporary custody, care, and control of Marvin and Sandra Maple until an investigation into the charges can be completed. Court stands adjourned. As we walked away from the courtroom that day, I felt very empty. I felt like we had lost our rights as parents for Christy and Bobby. I felt like a victim. I felt like the system was not working for us. We felt so helpless. Both the Baskins and the Maples were ordered to undergo complete psychological examinations while a 30-day investigation into the charges was conducted. During this time, the Maples' custody of Bobby and Christy was extended. The Baskins retained custody of Michael. We've said, okay, you know, if we're guilty of this, then why are you letting Michael stay with us? Oh, we're, you know, obviously nobody was concerned, concerned about Michael. There's so many inconsistencies with this case, and we're the whole time saying, please, just at least consider our side of the story, and no one would. Our rights, our opinions, our fears were never taken seriously by this court system. Hi. Hi. Are you Bobby? Yes. Would you like to have a seat for me, please? My name's Anita, and I work for the police department. As part of the ongoing investigation, Murfreesboro police detective Anita Flagg was asked to help determine if Bobby's stories about being sexually abused by his parents were true. Would you like to talk to me? Yes. Okay. He confirmed what the Maples said, but in such a way that it seemed he had been coached. First, first grade. I talked to Bobby after I talked to the Maples, so it was during further interviews that I did with him, things changed and became more bizarre, sounding like he had been coached. He had been led to say things that were not necessarily coming from the mouth of a little boy. At the conclusion of my involvement with the investigation, I decided that charges weren't warranted, that um, the investigation need not be taken any further on my part, and that there was no evidence to substantiate any charges at all. Detective Flagg and her colleagues recommended that Christy and Bobby be returned to their parents, but a court order was required to make this possible. Unfortunately, Christmas was now approaching and the court dockets were full. Once again, Debbie and Mark were only allowed intermittent visits with their children. Eventually, a final hearing on the case was scheduled for March 29th, almost a full year after the initial proceedings began. By now, there was little doubt that the hearing would return the children to their parents. 19 days before the hearing, court guardian Karen Hornsby telephoned the Maples to confirm a scheduled visitation for the children with their parents. 
After she failed to reach the maple several times, Karen became suspicious and decided to visit the house. I went over to the Maples house to remind them that the visitation was to take place the next day. And at that point, I saw the for sale sign in the yard. Hello, is anybody home? When I found the children were gone, my first reaction was disbelief. I didn't want to believe that they had taken them. I have to take part of the blame. I didn't believe the Baskins when they told me that they thought the Maples were capable of taking the children. But you have to realize I was being told fantastic things by both sides, and I just did not believe that they would do something like that. Uh, we have two children missing. I have no idea where they are. With two parent, two grandparents who have taken them, who I can't predict what their next move have been. They've been so bizarre so far. Anybody who is crazy enough to do this to her own daughter is crazy enough to do almost anything. You get up every morning and, and you think that perhaps this is going to be the day that uh, our FBI agent will call or somebody will call and say, we found the kids. And then it doesn't happen. And you have a little boy who will go to bed at night and say, please don't let Nanny and Stomp come steal me too. And I don't have a family anymore. And my fam um and I don't know if they're alive or if they're dead. They've threatened to kill the kids before they restore them. So it's fear. It's constant fear. So you try most of your time to sometimes when people ask you how many children you have, I want to say, Michael. So I don't have to even deal with it. But it's it's, it's always there. The fact that um my parents have stolen my children. It wasn't good enough just to kidnap them. They had to destroy any love the children had for me by making them think I was some kind of a monster. I'd like to add that just an appeal to the audience. Please, if you see anyone who even resembles these people to contact the authorities because we absolutely have no hope of finding them unless someone comes forward. There are no leads. Uh, our only chance is this, this program at this point. Marvin Maple is 53 years old. He is 6 feet 1 inches tall and weighs 185 pounds. He has blue eyes, dark graying hair, and wears glasses. Sandra Maple is 52 years old. She is 5 feet 4 inches tall and weighs 130 pounds. Sandra has blue eyes and brown hair. Christy Baskin is nine years old. She is four feet five inches tall and weighs about 70 pounds. Christy has blue eyes and sandy colored hair. Bobby Baskin is eight years old. He is four feet three inches tall and weighs about 80 pounds. Bobby has blue eyes and brown hair. These home movies were taken two months before the children were kidnapped by their grandparents. On March 13th, 1989, formal kidnapping charges were filed against the Maples. And on March 29th, the court order finally granted custody of the children to Debbie and Mark, six weeks after the children disappeared. Debbie and Mark have been cleared of all charges, including child molesting and abandonment. Police have received letters from the Maples postmarked in Boston and believe they may have crossed the border into Canada. It is possible they are still traveling together, or Sandra and Marvin may have split up, each taking a child. If you have any information about these four people, please contact the FBI the Rutherford County Sheriff's Department in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, or call our toll-free number, 1-800-876-5353.